Have you ever done this? Just like take a lens cap that you have at home and then just start tossing it around because there's like nothing else to do at home. Meanwhile, this is happening. What's going on guys? My name is Ben Seth. Thank you so much for checking back for another video and welcome to the home time zone. Uh, it's not really home time, I just, I'm just saying things because I'm starting to go insane. Before this whole situation that is happening happened, I was fortunate enough to go up to the mountains and hang out with a couple of cool videographers as a group. This group is called Vec Labs and they are three very, very talented videographers and cinematographers that work with a bunch of different clients and do crazy, crazy video work. Upon us adventuring, we came to the idea that we should do like a cool creative piece together and we decided to come up with this video. Cool, hey? Now here's the thing. This video style became very, very popular, especially recently with Daniel Schiffer and a bunch of other very, very talented videographers. And so I thought it would be cool to kind of get like a gearing up video together with these videographers who are usually on the other side of the lens. I pitched them the idea and I was like, hey, let's just throw some sh You know what I mean? Like, let's just really get your lens and all you have to do You know what I mean? Like, I'm just gonna grab your lens and we're just gonna toss them around and it's gonna be a great old time. Of course. Of course, they naturally agreed and they were like, yeah, let's do it, what's your vision? And this kind of brought me to this point right here. Because this video style has been really, really interesting and really just kind of eye-catching, especially for Instagram or YouTube, I thought it would be cool to kind of walk you through this whole video progress. I've been doing these sort of like handheld, shaky, cool style videos uh, for a little while and I would like to share my way of doing it because maybe it will help you. Maybe you haven't done it before and this would be a good little either guideline or just a stepping rock for you to step into this new style of filmmaking. All right, without further ado, let's jump on into the video. So first shot, basically we have the Fela King case and what I wanted to do is I wanted an exaggerated movement to slam down on the desk and have like a sound effect that just goes like to make it feel nice and big. After that, we had to unclock those things and we had to come up with a cover for the next shot. The next shot being uh, the Sony FS5, beautiful camera by the way, FS5 coming on from behind this thing. And if you pay attention to it, there's a little bit of sound designing happening here. Uh, and I want you to kind of keep that in the back of your mind throughout this entire video. All right, so second little sequence, we're basically wanting you to know what we're gonna be putting together. So what I decided to do is after I followed the suitcase down with the camera, okay, uh, I have decided that I'm just gonna follow the camera into its position and then afterwards what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock myself into a very stable position and then I'm just gonna be backing away and backing away, backing away. As I'm shooting this small little sequence here, I want to know that I'm gonna be speeding this portion up. So I had to adjust my speed of backing up so that when I'm gonna be speeding up the motion, all it's gonna look like is just 
Valley is going very, very fast, putting out all the things, but I'm just going at a casual speed backwards. Small little trick for you. After that, we start to finally assemble this camera. First times first, we need to grab the battery. So we decided that we're gonna slide the battery down from one hand to another. And as that happens, I'm basically following the action from one side to another. The way that I do it is I put one hand under the camera, one hand on the side, and I just slide my hand on the table. That gives the feeling that we're actually on the same level as this battery, which is cool. It looks nice. Let's keep moving. Here's another cool little portion here. So basically, so basically, once we get the battery, we're locking that into the camera. And the way that we do it is I'm actually just carrying the same motion going downwards with the camera. And then I'm carrying the same motion upwards on the other shot. So when I was recording this session, I actually had to pay attention as to which way I'm tilting the camera so that as I'm coming up, it should match up a circular motion. So it almost feels like that you just went through a wall and the whole world just kind of like spin upside down. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm itching my face like this. I shouldn't be touching my face. Ah! Okay, next up. Basically, as soon as that second shot of the orbiting was done, what I had to do is I had to speed ramp it, which means that I sped up parts of the clips and I actually curved it so that it really, really nicely eases into the next clip at which I started at a high speed and I slowed down. This is what it looks like. Oh, sound design. So basically, this was probably one of my favorite parts about this whole entire video, because what I had to do was I had to make sure that I spin my camera as he's clocking in the handle into the FS5. But then I had to think, oh my goodness, there's multiple little sounds that are happening here. So basically what I had to do was I had to go and grab sound effects off of a sound library and I attached those into one to make this sound. Great. Basically, I took uh, a gun locking sound and uh, believe it or not, I took a pen sound like a to finish up this sound as it clicks in. Let's keep on going. Okay, we need to stop here. We need to stop here for two seconds. So here's the cool part. So basically, as he was uh, putting in the, the clocking motion of the handle, uh, I basically took my camera and I flipped it upside down. As I was doing the same thing, I turned my camera back the other way again. And for the next shot, when he's attaching the handle on top of the camera, I flipped the camera again so that you see this full circle of this whole entire image. After that, I decided to just use whatever surroundings I had and basically just draw the camera down into an unlit position where you can essentially mask the cut for the next shot. Next shot comes in from the top and is basically a shot of the Atomos uh, Inferno, I believe it's the, it's the Inferno monitor and external recorder. It's a hefty big boy. And so basically, uh, instead of us like throwing it or doing whatever, I wanted to do just a cool little reveal shot where we reveal this product to you. So uh, Riley and I actually had to kind of like practice how we're going to be spinning this thing because it was just oh, like I had it one way in my head, but I couldn't say the words to make sense for him to do so. So then we, you know, it was just it was just a mess. Regardless, he got it and we can move on to the next thing. Also, have you noticed that I actually dimmed the music in this small little sequence just to kind of add a small little effect with the sound? Here, let's play it back a little bit. Okay, so before we keep on going, this was the moment when we twisted on the thing and I used a couple little film burn effects which you can get online for sometimes free even. And I attached these to kind of mask those transitions that didn't actually make sense. If I keep on just doing the same sort of camera movements over and over and over again, sure it looks cool, but your audience is gonna get dizzy. And I only figured this out because an audience of mine that I actually showed another video to was like, this is cool and all, but I actually got dizzy. Like I didn't know what was going on after a certain point. So I was like, okay, I need to stop with all the crazy movements and I just need to kind of dim it down a little bit to make sure that everyone's with me. So I think it's very beneficial for people to use a couple of static shots in those. So I think it's very beneficial for a couple of people to use some static shots so that, you know, your audience could kind of just like calm down, 
get back in the seat, and enjoy the video further on. <laughs> Hold the horses. So this was a shot that I was terrified to pitch. Here's the thing. This is a G lens. For all of uh, those people who do not know the kind of like the pricing of these lenses, this could be a solid like $3,000 lens or $2,000 lens. And not to say that $2,000 is like not a lot, but compared to the camera, it's not that much. But even that $2,000, man, it's a lot of freaking money. So for me to just say, hey, why don't you just go take the lens and then just toss it up was like, oh, what? But then they did it. Rather was like, yeah, man, it's your vision. Let's make it happen. So we practiced over a carpet and we flipped the lens and we flipped it and we flipped it. And oh my goodness, it slow-mo just... Let's move on. All right, so basically now we just want you to be in the same sort of story element. We threw the lens up, now it's time for us to take the cap off and slap it onto the camera. Believe it or not, I actually use the same sort of sound effects that I did in the previous uh, transition when I did the clocking sound and the pen. It works. Every time. Oh, <laughs> okay, so this shot was very simple. Basically, we tied up the HDMI cord for the Inferno and I wanted him to pull it out. And as he pulls out the cord, I follow the same motion with my camera and I added a, a rope untying sound effect just so it could be like a like you hear that little HDMI cable just go like you know after that we basically wanted to create the same motion so again transition very important that you follow the same sort of moving pattern and I went from one side and the next shot I continued the same motion so I went from one side and in the same shot, so I went from one side to another, and then in the next shot, I basically followed that same movement so that it makes sense. Basically what I ended up asking, basically what I ended up asking was take a battery, this is an AirPod Pro case, but just pretend it is a battery, is that we create a movement of, we toss it from one hand to the other, and then we're basically gonna lock it into the camera. But the camera could not be on the same hand as the receiving hand because then all you do is just, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So we needed to almost create a Z pattern in which your eye kind of follows this like back and forth motion. Now this added an extra little bit of movement which made the shot a little bit more interesting. All right, and final shot, basically, we're just doing a small little film burn to kind of mask that harsh cut that was happening here. And then afterwards, we just ended up picking up the camera and moving it away. Now, I got a logo from the Vec Labs boys, and essentially what I had ended up doing was I masked the logo at the very, very end so that as the camera moves away from a certain position, the mask also moves away from the Vec Labs logo. So it almost looks like that the Vec Labs so it almost looks like that the Vec Labs text was there the entire time and it was just blocked by the camera. And in credits. Lastly, uh, I just wanted to touch on basically lighting. It was a very simple little setup. Uh, it was an aperture light, just a key light. Uh, any kind of key light would work. Uh, what I'm using here for my YouTube videos is actually just uh, kind of like a $100 uh, light with like a couple of fixtures and like a, a little map box or little map a couple of life the one that i'm using here for youtube videos is basically just like a hundred dollar light with some uh light fixtures and just like a reflector box type like soft box thing um so you can just use that if you have some time at home if you have some equipment if you have certain lights even you like your 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 phone would work, you know what I mean? Like all you need to do is just turn on the flashlight and boom, like away you go. It's really, really simple. Now is the time to get creative and now is the time to take a little bit of time for yourself to sort of develop a craft and, and if photography or videography is kind of like your craft and that's what you wanna work on, then I highly encourage you to do the exact same thing. My name is Bensa, thank you so much for coming back and I'll see you in the next one.